again, everyone. This is Jared Rand, and welcome to the Global Guided Meditation Call for Saturday, July 23rd, 2022, three, a little after 3 p.m. Eastern. Trying is one of those empty words which create feelings of lack and struggle in our lives. Just notice how lazy the word try really is. It goes nowhere. It signifies that you are not 100% committed to following through, doing what you set out to do and need an escape route. Trying represents the attitude that you don't trust in your natural manifesting ability and divine connection to this universe. In the trying vibration, you are not allowing this all-powerful universe to truly support the effortless manifestation of your desires. It's one of the, the sneakiest leaks people have in their manifesting vibrations. Every time you go into try mode, the universe responds accordingly with almost giving you what you want. Almost giving you what you want. The fact is, is that you cannot manifest anything until you eliminate, <clears throat> excuse me, this weak, half-assed energy that your life from your life and replace it with the pure joy of trusting that you are a powerful, enlightened manifester. When you look at pure results in this life, the truth is, is that you either do something or you do not do it. The word trying weakens you because it just means that you're slightly invested in the possibility that it probably won't work out for you. It signifies that you are not going to move forward with your action plan and manifest your desires. The energy in trying contains the vibration of failure. Right now, pick up something with your hand, like a pen, and then try to let it go. That's right. Don't actually drop it. Just try to do it. What happened? It's a pretty frustrating experience. This is what happens in your life when you say, I'll try to do X, Y, Z. You generate a perpetually frustrating experience between what you want and what actually shows up into your world. In this mysterious game of manifesting, you have the choice to either commit 100% to focusing and feeling the end result you want or committing 100% to focusing in feeling the end result you don't want. Or don't want is just saying to the universe that you are not willing to be responsible for instigating success or failure. By bringing more awareness to which side, which side of the coin you're focusing on you can be clear about what result you're going to attract. When you make this rock-solid commitment to your awareness, knowing in each moment what you are focusing on, you have the power to send out a powerful request into the universe. And it knows that you are sincere about creating and receiving your desired outcome. The opposite of try is commitment. When you step into a truly committed vibration, it is received by the universe as a big yes signal to summon all its people and forces to support your vision full-heartedly. 
We never manifest anything alone in this world. The all-knowing universe always is assisting us in the manifestation of our goals, dreams, and visions into the physical world. It's good to know that the universe requires crystal clarity of our intention to support you and your manifestation. If you send out a wishy-washy trying energy, you'll just get back wishy-washy results. And then the people of the universe start supporting you as a wishy-washy, irresponsible person. There's nothing wrong with this. We all have our strategies for remaining powerless, and the path of playing the irresponsible game can only last so long before it's too painful. So the pendulum will eventually swing back to responsibility and knowing your true power. Then, when you emanate the feeling of strength, solidity, and commitment in your vision, you'll receive some pretty amazing results in return. So start today to embrace a new way of being in your life one in which you are creating massive integrity with yourself and the feeling of impeccability with what you say and what you do. Don't be an integrity Nazi with yourself or others. Be gentle and compassionate with yourself on this endless journey. You will always exist even after the body is gone. To create that true long-term relationship with yourself that you can look forward to for eternity. The key is to an effective, healthy relationship with yourself that works is is only make commitments that you truly want. And never when you don't want to. If you don't know what you want, just say, I don't know yet. The universe has to accept this answer and allow you to be in a state of the unknown. This is your life, and you get to do what you want to do with it. Stop attempting to make things happen by sticking your big toe in the baby pool. Instead, dive head first into the ocean of existence, and you'll be amazed at how quickly things start manifesting. Life is amazing. It is a genius at making things happen quickly when you're open willing and ready for it. The less you try to please others and do it all, the faster things happen with grace and effortless ease. The less you try to please others and do it all, the faster things happen with grace and effortless ease. If you're someone who has been stuck in an old habit of saying you're going to do something and really mean it, yet somehow get distracted, tempted, pulled off course, and never happen to follow through, then you've just got some digging to do. You'll need to dive deeper inside, relax into the core of your being, and do some uprooting. We suggest that you take take a year to completely eliminate the worst word, try and its attitude from your vocabulary, meaning any time you feel yourself about to say, I'll try, stop yourself. Rewind and say something else with more backbone or nothing at all. When you stop saying the actual word, I'll try, you'll stop thinking it, 
feeling it and release its energetically draining side effect. When you rid all of all the weak links in your verbiage, your manifesting vibration will skyrocket beyond the moon. Try, should, need to, have to, got to, and can't are the top five to eliminate. Try, should, need to, have to, got to, and can't are the top five to eliminate. The less you use these words, the stronger your intention becomes and the more magical your manifesting abilities become. Just sense how your body responds to eliminate I'll try from your life. You may make you nauseous or bring up deeper fear. Yet when you eliminate this word, you'll see some radically outstanding changes. If you're normally a triaholic, we guarantee you'll be pleasantly surprised in just a few days how dramatically different your life feels and how effortlessly those things you desire simply manifest into your life. Look into your past and review the types of situations where you were tempted to or have attempted to play the trying game. Perhaps when you were feeling overcommitted, overwhelmed, or rushing to get your to-do list done in such a state of overwhelm and panic, you might justify your actions and say, of course, I'll try to do X, Y, and Z. People may often use, I'll try because they are afraid of disappointing someone and they think it's better to disappoint someone else rather than yourself. Yet it is this, is this really true? What happens to your relationship with yourself, your integrity level with your word, when you don't believe in you and never know if you'll ever follow through? Do you see the vicious cycle now? Today is your day out of this toilet bowl and can shift your life in the most radical and awesome ways. So the invitation now is not to try this assignment, yet to actually do it this time. Watch your language very carefully this week and for the next seven days. Do not think, feel, or speak the words, I'll try. If you should slip, be very gentle and compassionate with yourself and imagine a big red stop sign pops up in front of you. Take a deep breath and restate your sentence with, I meant to say, I will, or I am committed to, I am going to, I get to, etc. Only say it when you mean it. Otherwise, say that you don't know or cannot commit at this moment in time. Pay close attention to the types of situations, people, and circumstances that entice you to go down the I'll try road. Notice what you are suckered in by in life or tempted with that keeps you stuck in the old habit. If you're willing to open it, open to it, go beyond the seven-day invitation and be free from trying anything over the next three months, watch how your relationships, finances, health, 
love life, and personal goals dramatically shift. It's truly a miraculous thing to see the outrageous changes that will take place when you start being committed to who you are and what you want and stop entertaining the notorious try word. It's easy to get tied up in it because it's habit. We all have this habit constantly. And we aren't aware of it, but we do it. What do you think? You know, it's like it, what, what, you're talking to yourself today. You think you should try this? You think that'll work? I wonder. I wonder. Will it work? Are you going to do this? Uh, I'll try. Or let's try and lift this. And what happens? And we're it, and it's something that we we get so used to doing that we really we really don't think about it. We just use it pretty much mainstream. It's like when Buddha says. Be mindful of your thoughts. Master your thoughts. When we determine to spend more time in the area of mastering our thoughts, then we have a much better understanding of who and what we are. Just like you, you talk with someone, you say, they'll say, are you going to do that? And you'll say, I'm going to try and do it. Well, then why even do it? Why even do it? If, you can't, if you're not going to do it, what, why would you try and do it? Or here's another one. Are you going to get that done? I'm going to try and get it done. It kind of, it, 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 it gives us a, kind of a lazy door out. It says, well, you know, at least I tried. Can't blame me for trying. But every single time that we use that, well, I'll try, see what happens. Now, the shift takes place when you, you're you aware, right, and some of the habits of some of the words that we use. And we negate them. We remove them permanently from our vocabulary. And almost in the beginning, it force, it's, not to, it's not very comfortable, but it, it forces you to start, I'm going to do this. And you do it. Or you might say, I'm not going to do this today. I'll do it tomorrow. But we, the word try is gone. The, word, the words, like I said, the, the five key areas, right? Could have. I could have done that. I should have. It, it truly is. It, it, it's a programming process. It, we are literally reprogramming ourselves. So remember, it's here's the words: try, should, need to, have to got to, and can't are the top five to eliminate. The less you use these words, 
the stronger your intention becomes and the more magical your manifesting abilities become. And you got to mean it. It can't be half-assed where you just kind of go, oh, okay, well, I won't. I, I, you know, I won't entertain those words. So we're kind of, re we're restructuring. So if you will, go to the place where you're not going to be interrupted. And I'm sure that we all are. And the, 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 every single time, the first thing that we care to do is relax these bodies. We are in. Because we're not the body, we're not the name, we're not the character, we're not the personality, we are not the status in this life. We are the God, the pure consciousness, kingdom of God, source creator, many different names. So when, when we relax the body, and many people have tried all kinds of artificial ways to relax the body, it works for a bit not long term so we focus on our breath easy and slowly in through the nose and easy and slowly out through the mouth and when we do this you know the body of course it, it's it's like this super magnet or sponge and it absorbs everything Everything, every little thought, emotion, anger, anxiety, stress, fear, uh, hatred, revenge, manipulation, it absorbs it all. Year after year after year after year after year after year after year. Yeah, after a while, we get used to it. We don't, you know. But there comes a time when the, the body you're in gets to a certain existence, so to speak. You ever done that? Have you ever heard people say, you know, I used to be able to handle stress a lot more better than I can now. They say they just can't handle it like they used to. It's because that it, it, it cannot absorb anymore. It's saturated. It's the way the body telling you, said, you got to do something about this. You, you got to. You got to do something. You got to help me here. We got we got to figure this out. We I can't absorb any more heavy duty stress, and this is why it's so imperative to focus on the breath release. Because see, when we move into the now, this is what really happens. You'll know you're in the now because this is the stuff that'll happen. Number one, your mind chatter's gone, right? And you disengage with the ego mind. You leave them alone. Ego mind, subconscious mind, all illusions, you leave them alone. You don't interact. You don't engage. You don't entertain them. And we, we put out 60,000 thoughts apiece every single day. That's a lot of thoughts. Right? On top of that, we have tens of thousands, millions, and billions of, well, you could call them thoughts, but they're actually programs that fly by us like clouds in the sky. Of which, 99.999% are not ours. So just, for, just figure that one, all that going on. And see, the ego mind does not, it doesn't exist in the now. It doesn't. And this is the only place that any of us will ever be able to master the ego mind and subconscious mind. See? Because what we do is we watch them. We don't judge them, right? We watch how they operate. We see, we learn. We watch how they operate. You get, you'll, you'll get to a point where you'll say, that's an ego thought. I'm not interested in entertaining that. Or that's an ego feeling. I'm not interested in entertaining that. And you'll do all this from your heart mind.
when 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 someone says that they, they say to someone else right there in the conversation i'm better than you i'm stronger than you i can do better more than this and that than you i have more money than you do i've got this more than you do that is all ego mind every single bit of it no difference no difference that when armies militaries fight over what territory that is complete ego mind wars wars complete ego mind hatred anger fear complete ego mind insecurity doubt complete ego mind you see how imperative it is to choose to stay out of yesterday and tomorrow and practice the now because the body will let go you'll know it too you're you all most of us we bunch our shoulders to a certain extent some are very very pronounced others lightly uh subtle but because we're tense because we're stressed and so the body holds that stuff and it holds it in different parts of the body neck shoulders back feet ears eyes hair i kid you not we we're, we all we hold things with these bodies and a lot of the times we're just not even we're not aware of it so when we focus on our breath and the body just kind of takes a long nap it just relaxes it's like when you're in a, in a in a place say on a hammock right and you're sitting in between two trees and you see the trees and you you you're uh you're not asleep but you're really not awake and you're just there floating you're in that hammock you have you're not thinking you're not conjuring you're not you're not doing anything you're not entertaining the ego mind the subconscious mind you are just being and you have there's you have really no motivation to do anything else yeah you, know, you might hear some light noises far away there'll be a little dog barking or something but not disturbing so you feel the breeze and it's almost like there's an echo it's you're you're not like i said you're not awake and you're not asleep but you're completely relaxed and this is the practice and that's when you it, it really it's not like you planned to move in to that silence you it just happened you just did so it's a a discovery we we either discover it in this lifetime the next one 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 and however long it takes but the now is absolutely paramount you don't try to be in the now okay because you're using that word that word is omitted from your vocabulary you you are in the now when you focus on your breath you, there's no other way you focus on your breath you're in the now now it's important that we practice being gentle kind generous and humble with ourselves at all times 
I've seen people just incessantly destroy themselves, but for no reason whatsoever, you know, verbally. And also being of the highest of the highest, high, deepest of the deepest, deepest, purest of the purest, purest, eternal love, gratitude, and peace. This is maintaining this. It's not temporary. It's not try. It's do. And we, we continually practice it. Now, of course, we've all been trained incessantly so for a very long time. You know, if someone says to you, hey, Ben, what are you doing tomorrow? Ben says, well, Al, I have not a clue. What? I don't have a clue what I'm doing tomorrow. I'm focused on the now. All I have is the now. I'll ask you something, Ben. Just for giggles. Can you guarantee that you're going to wake up tomorrow morning? I've said this to people, too. Can you guarantee without a shadow of a doubt, completely, that you're going to wake up tomorrow morning? I have not come. I mean, I mean I'm talking about being genuine and sincere and honest with oneself and not faking it. So, But anybody that I've asked that question who genuinely responded truthfully said no. I can't. If that's, I just know. There are too many variables. Okay. And it doesn't matter about the age, see. So why the heck are we so controlled by the ego mind to stay in yesterday or tomorrow throughout this entire life and through tens of thousands of lifetimes. Does that make any sense to any of us? This is why the now is really, truly, unmitigatingly, all we have, all we have ever had. Where do you see yourself five years from now? Well, you know, you could sit and say, how could you, you don't know. How could anybody know that? It's a silly question, really. It truly is. I can make a statement that where I'm at right now in this very moment, I know I am. That's it. Now, we... When you we begin to learn, choose to learn, that we do, we don't try, we do, and that we begin to master our thoughts. Mastering our thoughts is paramount. This way, we're just not randomly kicking things out there. Manifesting all kinds of things that we aren't even aware we're manifesting. It, it's no different than being completely blind, right? And trying to run across the street. So... But we're enticed, right, by the ego mind. And you, you, you'll find yourself floating off, right? You'll be in the now, and then out of the clear blue, you end up being over here, or you're in another thought, or something you know, else, right? And you say, this is not not an issue. I can focus on my breath right now, and I will be in the now. I'll be in the now 3,000% of the time, every time. 
you might find yourself doing this 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 times a day. But the results are miraculous. So we, could, we find ourselves, right? We're standing in front of three paths. Now, all of us are in the center path, which is the now. And then we have yesterday, which is the past. That's on the left. Then we have tomorrow, which is the future, which is on the right. But we're all we're stacked. We're, we're in the now. Now, we look at the paths, and we notice that the trees have formed a golden canopy over the paths, with shimmering golden leaves and branches and bark. The path itself is a brilliant emerald green flaming grass. There's only one thing there's there's only one thing we notice between these paths, right? The one on the left, yesterday, the past is really, really, really worn. The one on the right, tomorrow, the future, is really, really, really worn. The one we're standing on, the now, in the center, it it looks almost brand new. Now, we know why this is. We know that the ego mind does not exist in the now, so it does everything it can. It bends over backwards to keep us in yesterday or tomorrow. That's it, period. And when, when the majority of us stay in the yesterday or tomorrow, we suffer. Bottom line, we suffer. So we practice staying in the now through our breath. That's what we practice. We don't stop. We do it every day. Eventually, we will transform, and we will be in the now all the time, and the now will be the natural state of being, not yesterday or tomorrow. And you ask yourself the question, do I want to suffer? Do I want to suffer? Well, come on. You know, how many people say, oh, yeah, I want to suffer? You'll say to yourself, no, I don't care to suffer. Well, then don't stay in yesterday or tomorrow, and you won't suffer. Now, we, we go, we will go, because... Uh, into the past and into to yesterday because we reminisce. We are nostalgic. We review things. Um, you know, it could be a feeling, an emotion that, that surfaces or bubbles to the surface uh, that reminds us about a time that we experienced uh, that was really fun and we really enjoyed it, and we review it. And there's other times that, you know, we did things that didn't work out right, and we use those as references and say, well, I might try it this way. It might work out this time. So we do that. We have this great hall. All of us do, each of us. It's just massive. And our subconscious mind is just a grand recorder. And it records everything. As soon as you enter the baby body, it's recording, 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 recording. Not only this lifetime, but all lifetimes. And what it does is it randomly plays things back. So you could be somewhere. You could be traveling somewhere. You could be uh, in a group communicating. And it just comes over you. You say, you know, this person might notice something and say, what? I, I think I, I feel like I've done this before. It's really eerie. It, it, it really feels like I've done this before. And they have done it before, and the subconscious mind has played it back randomly. So we'll go into our great hall. When you walk into a room, you don't not necessarily you're not aware of it, but you'll, your eyes will flash the ceiling and the walls. When you go into your great hall, you, you'll do that, but you won't see ceilings or walls because the place is so vast. Nonetheless, you'll go to the, the shelves and the drawers and You'll, you'll get out movies and, and some pictures and some books up of your life experiences. You'll go sit in an easy chair. You'll see this white rectangle floating in, in the air. And you'll, you'll watch some of the movies and read some of the books and look at some of the pictures. 
right? You have fun. You have a good time. But you don't stay there. You'll put everything away. You'll turn off the light. You'll shut the door. And you'll move forward in life. And on occasion, you'll revisit. Some of us, however, unconsciously will stay there so darn long that we end up taking the past. We bring it into a future that doesn't exist. We create that future from that past. And we relive that past in that future. This is why a lot of people will say, no matter what we do, we always seem to end up here. Now, we all go into the future because we're we, we poked and prodded and hurried and rattled and everything. We've got to know this, got to know, good, but i got to find out when this stuff's going to happen for me. You know, I've had people say that. Almost, almost to the point of desperation. So we, there's a lot of uh, external authority. There's uh, numerologists, there's astrologers, there's all kinds. Card readers, tea leaf readers, palm readers, crystal readers, pendulum readers. So we'll come across somebody and they'll do a reading for us. And our question is, is that most of the time it's about finances. And, and, you know, when am I going to have enough money to enjoy my life? Or when am I going to have enough money to buy a new vehicle or house or whatever it may be? And so they'll do reading for you and they'll go over things. And they say, well, it looks to me like you're, you're really in line to receive a massive incoming amount of money over the next couple of weeks. And you say, well, that's great. Right? Everybody, you know, people respond differently depending on how they view themselves. So the first person might have just done it for giggles and has no belief in it at all, thinks it's a joke, right? The second person embraces it overly so, writes it down in a calendar, starts counting the hours, starts formulating uh, attachment to the outcome of it, uh, starts formulating um, expectations. Now, the third one, they embrace it. It's easy peasy. They just embrace it. And they make sure that it is as clear and detailed as possible for the universe to begin the manifestation. Now, they don't um, covet it and white-knuckle it and, you know, squeeze it to death. They let it go because they have total confidence and trust in themselves and the universe. That's it. Period. They know it will. They know it will happen. And it, and it will. It does. The other two may be once in a blue moon. Now, every single thing that we do, that we focus on, we create. And it isn't, it isn't outside of us. It's that which lies within So we have parts of ourselves because we're one. And we have parts of ourselves, the dots that we are in these bodies, that are just stone cold asleep. We have other parts of ourselves that are consciously aware and awake. Now, we love each one just as deeply as the other. Consciously aware means that we know that we are of and from the highest of the highest high, Deepest of the deepest, deepest, purest of the purest, purest, eternal love. Now, see, it gets kind of tedious because we have been so trained to believe that all things are separate. 
So when you when you look at ascended masters, Kuanyin, Maitreya, Buddha, Lakshmi, Ganesh, Gaia, Saint Germain, Christ, Omori, Abhidhanshya, Peltha, Yahweh, Yeshua. You look at the the, the offworlders, the Pleiadians, the Syrians, the Arcturians, the Andromedan, the Felines, Zeta Reticuli, Anunnaki, Nords, Greys, Draco, Reptilian, Golden Pyramid, Avion, and endless others. You look at the Archangel, the German, the Seraphim, the Archetypes. You look at all of our loved ones who ascended out of body in this lifetime, and all lifetimes we've inhabited, all the inhabitants of inner earth, Agartha, beneath earth, hollow earth. When you look at the fairies, the sprites, the elves, the gnomes, the dwarves, the trees, the trolls, the elementals, earth, air, water, fire, ether, the mermaid, the dolphin, the whale, the pegasus, the unicorn, the centaur, the minotaur, and many, 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 many more, the light spectrum beings. We're all one. We're one. Always have been. This isn't something new. But you see... There's, there's other species, other civilizations that have the ego mind thing like we do. Okay? So a lot of them look at themselves as separate. Like we do. There wouldn't be even a smidgen of conflict in existence if all of us understood one thing, that we were all one. All those lower frequencies would not exist. So it's like when you look at, when you, we look at this planet, the guys that we are in these bodies, and we liberate this planet. Because we decided to do that over four years ago. And we're liberating it from lower frequencies, you know, lower, pure evil, lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies, souls that have absorbed too much darkness. Because we don't care to have it here. So we increase vibrational frequency of pure, deep, eternal love, the highest of the highest high vibrational frequency. And we're all in full compassion, non-judgment, non-ego, non-negativity, stillness of mind, gentleness, kindness, generosity, and humbleness, bliss, joy, peace, tranquility, benevolence, prosperity, abundance. And we're all one, and we're all God, and we're all love. And our God force love light energy is in all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever. Continues to grow, intensify, and expand. We are we are continually increasing our vibrational frequencies, more so than we ever have before. It's proof positive is to see this, the transition that you can feel in your heart mind. So we immediately form a massive white fire circle of light around the equator of this planet Earth guy, Arya, in this now. This white fire light emanates from the God source, you in that body, all of us, pure, deep, eternal love. Now, it is so bright it grays out the darkness of sacred space. You could take a trillion suns, bunch them all together, and they would pale in comparison to the light that we are. And we flood, saturate, permeate this planet, on and in and above it and below it, infinity and beyond. Where would there be room for lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies? There isn't. They are being vanished. Fly from pure, deep, eternal love.
And so what we do is we continue to increase the vibrational frequency till not one speck exists. And we go from 5th to 6th to 7th to 8th to 9th to 10th to 11th to 12th to 13th to 14th to 15th to 16th to 17th to 18th to 19th to 20th to 21st. It is endless. Our dimensional shifting is due to our acknowledgement and understanding of who and what we are, which is divine perfection. And we continually increase our vibrational frequency and pure deep eternal love, gratitude and peace. As we continue to do so collectively, the frequency continues to increase higher and higher love light energy floods in. This is it. This this planet is a God planet. We we have around eight billion humanoid forms inhabited by gods. We have all the other forms inhabited by gods to experience those physical forms. So it isn't even an argument or a debate that we are a God planet. What we're doing now is we're increasing the vibrational frequency to the extent that we start to become a paradise, a God planet paradise. That means that everyone enjoys their life. Not just a handful or intermittently, but everybody embraces their life and enjoys their life. Now, as, as we, we, we understand this, as we ascend, we're, we immediately find ourselves in this massive ocean of glitter. It's way beyond anything you can depict on this planet. And the ocean of glitter, the reflective, right, is us. The tiny microscopic pairs is us. And so we enter them and we discover that all of us and all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever, are teaching and learning from each other. Now, about 98% of us are caught, stuck in the material, physical world, ego mind. 2% of us are in the internal journey, the God within. So there's a lot of people missing a lot of things. And so lifetime after 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 lifetime. They start over again, and then they go another lifetime, and another lifetime, and they're still stuck in the material, physical world. Now, when you discover, right, you're you're in the inner journey, and so you start to discover who and what you are, and then you begin to realize that everything. Everything you look at, you know, a tree, a bush, a shrub, uh, a dog, a cat, a horse, a cow, a moose, uh, a bug on, on, on the, in the rug, a, 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 a butterfly, dragonfly, you name it. All of them are gods in physical form. And they teach us all the time. Now, the majority of us, just it just flies by. We, we, we're, we're so distracted with the material, physical world that a lot of that stuff just kind of washes on by. But there are some of us that look at it and just think that it's absolutely phenomenal. You're sitting there watching a dragonfly dart around, right? Or a bee pollinating. And those of us who go into the now and we begin to discover the gods that we are, slow down. We start figuring out, and why are we in such an all-fire hurry?
Now, we create, the guys that we are in these bodies, we create columns of light. Right? And to remind us, because we do have some amnesia when we come in these bodies, and so we're met with the omnipotently powerful emerald green flaming healing light of Archangel Raphael. This is a column of light that we created that reminds us all the gods that we are in these bodies, that we are the power of healing these bodies. And we aren't there yet. And then we have the violet blue purple flaming light of Archangel Michael, which is a reminder of the gods that we are in these bodies of our omnipotent power, strength, and resolve. Then we have the white fire. Now the white fire imbues us all with a impenetrable white fire armor. The armor emanates from the God source within each and every one of us. And it is pure deep eternal love. It is the highest of the highest high vibrational frequency. It's impenetrable. As long as you maintain that frequency, you are protected in infinity and beyond. Now, you, you, you are the only one with the power that if you decide to lower your vibrational frequency, consciously or unconsciously, through hatred, anger, greed, deceit, manipulation, revenge, hurriedness, you're going to lower your vibrational frequency low enough to create a breach in your white fire armor, allowing all the lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies come flooding in. Then demon possession, attachment, and other things are possible. Now, if you do decide to do this, we have created fail-safes the gods that we are in these bodies. And a double column of light. First part of the column of light is a purple transmuting flame. This reminds us to bring in a purple transmuting flame, cleanse, transmute all of these lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies into neutralized substance, sending them to pure consciousness where they are no more. Then the violet ray, the second part of the column of light. This reminds us that we bring in the violet ray right behind the purple transmuting flame, cleanse and purify the area where these lower dark matter survival matter frequencies were, healing the breach in our white fire armor, restoring our vibrational harmony to the highest of the highest high, deepest of the deepest deepest, purest of the purest purest, eternal love, gratitude, peace. Then we come upon the golden white pink light. This is a column of light that we, the gods, created within these bodies to remind us all that we are the sun. We are the sunlight. We are the sunsets and the sunrises. We are the rainbows and the rain. We are the oceans, the rivers, the lakes, the streams, the trees, the forests, the soils, the animals. We're everything. Everything is us. Now, yet those of us who are in the, the, the material physical world, we will look at a sunset and say, that is absolutely beautiful. Got to get a picture of that, right? And, and that's, that's how we identify with our surroundings. Now, those of us who are in the journey within and in the heart-mind, we will look at that same view and say, that is the God that I am. It's a big difference. One is an illusion. The other is a reality. One is an illusion, the other is a reality. Now, we continue to ascend above the planet. Some of us step outside of our physical form and hover effortlessly above it. reason we do that is because we can, and it's a lot of fun. We 
come into full contact with this massive crystalline light tower. We, the gods in these bodies, created this tower. It's larger than the solar system and beyond. Now, in the center of the column, we discover this massive oblong sphere in the center. The sphere is a golden white bowl of light. It, in turn, is surrounded by numerous multicolored rings of light that seem to go to infinity and beyond. This, in turn, creates a super bright, misty, white, sparkling cloud. It's absorbed through our heart mind, and it feels like a warm embrace that never ends. Now, we discovered that the golden white ball of light is the highest of the highest high, deepest of the deepest, deepest, purest of the purest, purest, eternal love, gratitude and peace. Well-being, gentleness, kindness, generosity, and humbleness, bliss, joy, peace, massive tranquility, prosperity, benevolence, abundance, and we discover that this is a reflection of the gods that we are within these bodies. Now, at the top of this column... We, the gods in these bodies, this designed it so that the golden ocean can come cascading down 360 degrees, 24-7, infinity and beyond, as it's doing right now. Now, this is pure, deep, eternal love, the golden ocean is. And it is saturating, permeating, and flooding everything. All life, the highest supreme value in the universe. Now, all of us are drops of this golden ocean. We also hold the essence of this golden ocean. Golden ocean is the drops, drops of the golden ocean, and the only illusion is separation. Now we see our meditative sphere. We, the gods within these bodies, created this meditative sphere over four years ago. Counting up, it holds, it's holding, it's closer and closer to 1,900 meditations in perpetual motion, nonstop, seven days a week, for over four years. Hundreds of millions of us, on and off world, consciously aware, we're increasing the vibrational frequency of existence. And if you stay in the now and you focus on your breath and you hover, you float and you watch what goes on with this planet and what is happening right in this very moment. We, the gods in these bodies, created a field, so to speak. This field is a golden white pink field. It shimmers. You walk through it. You can see it. You can hover above it. You can hover, watch it. Right? And the sky is a trillion times more intense than that. So we're watching, you're watching, as you're just, you're not judging, you're just watching this all take place. You see all this goop, you know, AI rogue goop, uh, pure evil, um, souls that have taken in too much darkness, and it's all evaporating from the planet. It's disintegrating, flashing, as you watch it. In any remnants, it gets to the sky. It's just one big flash, and it's gone. And this is what's happening with this planet. Transcending into a God planet paradigm. And everything that people have known will no longer be. Recognize the sacred aspect in everyone you meet. Feel that underneath their ego trip and hurricane of thoughts is a divine being waiting to be seen. Know that you are completely perfect, whole, and at peace at the core. Just don't think you are. Know you are. At your core, you have the power to experience bliss anywhere and transcend any suffering that may occur. 
be this divinity. It's as simple and sweet as recognizing that you are pure being. I'll join you in meditation and return to close sound.
take an easy, slow breath in through the nose, and an easy, slow breath out through the mouth. Be still. The inner path of healing you is the only way to discover total freedom. Explore what it's like to choose to heal yourself everywhere you go and whomever you are with. Make the commitment to be with you today and find inner peace with what you cannot. That is your special sacred healing day. Wherever you go today, pretend that you are continuously merging with this love energy and healing experience. Stay connected throughout the day by saying, I am whole, healed, and complete. Focus on receiving the most nourishing, peaceful, and healing energy you can possibly fathom. Take this with you for the rest of the day into the evening and night and the following morning. We will return here Sunday, July 24, 2022, little at 3 p.m. Eastern to continue our global guided meditation 